Once again, I don't know if this is going to come out on the video, since I've got it set on such a small video file now, but whatever, we'll run through this. So, um, just did a little quick spreadsheet from my normal city driving without a unit. I get 20 miles per gallon, approximately. Um, highway driving without the unit, 23.6 uh, miles per gallon. Call that 20, round it up, 24. Um, this is the plug-and-play version that I stripped down and cleaned all the electrolyte out and uh, ran it as a basic test. Um, not as good as when you tweak the units, obviously. I mean, when you're running, the more amperage seems to get more gas, and I was getting up closer to, like, 50 miles per gallon with the unit tweaked, and I'll show you that as I get back, uh, back into that model. But I stripped this one down and just did the basic plug-and-play unit that they supply, throw in the tap water um, and, and basically plumb it into your air intake and drive away, now obviously hooking it up to your alternator and power supply, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, plug and play unit got me, so highway 32.6 with the unit on, highway without the unit on, and this wasn't a fair test, I actually had air conditioning running this day on the, uh, with the HHO u unit, so the plug and play you can get a bit of, but whatever, I'm not going to split hairs here. Um, highway without was 23.6, which equals uh, 8.93, almost 9 miles per gallon increase, um, which as a percentage works out to 37.7, so I'll round that up, 38% increase just with their standard plug and play no modifications, no extra electrolyte or any of that kind of stuff. So out of the box, that's a pretty good, pretty good little unit. Um, now I'll go outside. It is still raining, but whatever. I want to get this video done and stop you guys hassling me. <laughs> um, see you soon. So anyway, here we are under the hood, looking at the unit. So you can see it plumbed in there. Here's the battery, gas pipe plumbed into the air intake. Uh, as my inlet manifold. Here's the unit tucked in down there. You can see the water half filled. You can kind of barely make out the mesh probably inside. I don't know how quality this is going to be being such a small file size, but um, as you can see, so it's laying on its side, which is a totally different scenario to the vertical units. I mean, it's only 90 degree rotation, but makes a world of difference. Uh, obviously increasing your surface area of water quite dramatically uh, for the same volume size unit. Anyway, then uh, here it is, you can see the mounting strap and then it's earthed up here and that. So that's your gas out and rolling it around uh, plumbing in there and then I've just got mine's like a rubber kind of uh, air air intake material, so I just drilled into that and plumbed it in. Then I've just got some sealing stuff that kind of stays soft, which is good. And then come around the front. Uh, like I said on the other video, I couldn't work out where the power side of the alternator is, where you, if you plugged it in and you're not getting power, then the car's not running, as they suggest. Um, in their ebook, I I couldn't find that anywhere, and I wanted to get the unit on there, so I'm just plugged on the power side, uh, as you can see down there, which means you have to run a, a switch just to get to turn that off. Then I come up here. I've got a 20 amp fuse in line. Just uh, if you overdo the electrolyte, if you're going to go that way, which will produce more gas, obviously, uh, but you got to get the balance just right. So 20 amp fuse. Um, pull it around and then it tucks down here and then I've got another split there. I do have the unit apart but like I mentioned I videoed it in a large file format and anyway there's problems so I apologise for not seeing the unit split but if you buy the ebook you'll see the parts all laid out. So basic two end caps, four inch bit of stainless steel tubing, um, stainless steel 5 rod through the middle, washers on either end, 
mesh welded to the stainless steel rod are the parts you get. The rest of it, the electrical wire and all the other gizmo bits you have to buy yourself. Um, you can kind of make the mesh out I can on this screen, but whether you can, I don't know. Uh, yeah, and then I've got another split there, so when I pull the unit off, I just unplug that. It saves breaking the seal, because if I take that nut off the end of the 516th rod, obviously that's going to break the seal with the, uh, the O-ring mounted into, recessed into the acrylic plastic. Uh, so then my power line, my uh, positive goes through the firewall to the switch on the dash, which I'll show you in a second, comes back out, gets split just there with those yellow, it's just a spade type connector so I can pull the unit out. Um, the other good thing with the fuse line or running one of these little splits when you want to measure your amps, it's a lot easier obviously because you've got a your amp meter has to go in line. Um, so yeah, if you're using electrolyte and you want to measure your amps, well that's the only way you can do it. Um, so that's about it. <laughs> pretty, it's pretty basic. Negative gas outlet. I got a nice big thick the white one coming off here, followed down. It's kind of tucked in behind my brisk. Push the cable out of the way, and then you can just see it mounted on there. So it's got a good, good negative, good ground uh, to the outside of the unit, which is grounded, which is good, makes sense. And then there's your positive, and as long as you keep your positive from not touching, I'll wrap that connector up so it doesn't touch on anything and short out whilst turning. And that's it under the hood. So it's all, it's all pretty, pretty basic. So the last specs, I guess. Uh, Stealth, 92, 120,000 Ks on the clock, uh, 3 litre V6, normally aspirated by the non-turbocharged model. It's pretty windy out here, I guess there's a lot of wind going onto the microphone. I'm not checking it's not raining anymore, so... Yep, that's the car. Um, I'll show you the unit once more with uh, just showing you the amps that it's sucking. Okay, so I've got, uh, I don't know if you can see that there, there's my, uh, basically I pulled the fuse out of the block, out of the fuse housing there, I've got my finger just holding it onto the line, so I'm testing my amps right now, I just took the car for a run, and it's drawing 8, it's dropping back uh, a little bit, it was running at 9 when I, just before when I did the practice set up. Um, so running around eight, 8, 9 or 10 when it's kind of fully loaded at the moment. Um, so um, you calculate 10 basically um, when it's fully operating by your 14 odd volts that your alternator is putting out. It's 140 watts of power that you're taking out of the system. Um, putting back in, I mean I'm just measuring my miles per gallon efficiency so until you get a little dyno you can't really tell the increase in horsepower relative to what's consumption of that but obviously you're getting better fuel efficiency. Uh, the unit's working. Uh, you can, I don't know if you're going to get much of a shot down here. There's a bit of scum, I mean tap water's going to give you some oxides and whatever else. Kind of popping up there, but you can kind of see the gas and what have you. I mean, their unit runs off vacuum a lot, so I mean, you can see bubbles popping up there, but uh, it's the vacuum that really gets it kicking over, but it, you can't see it with this car idling, and I can't be in six places at once, so uh, yeah, there it is. I think that's the end of it. See you guys.